Good morning and welcome back to Investor Intel on a dreary Friday morning. Today we're with Brad Moore from Global Cannabis. How are you today, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. You know, it feels like the cannabis industry has been around forever. I'm sitting here drinking my breakfast with an old ABBA Maddox mug. But the industry is changing rather rapidly, and we see it evolving into a more high-tech area. And your company is in that space. Yes, it is. It, it, a lot's changed over the last couple of years. We've gone from lots of growing now into we have to start looking at um, how we're going to sell this stuff and what, what products are going to work best. And that's data. So for about the past year, Global Cannabis has been working with various forms of blockchain technology and distributed ledger technology to try to build up data that's saleable. Can you tell us about your basic revenue model? Sure. Uh, our basic revenue model is we basically look at various forms of data from the anecdotal side, the clinical study side. We use uh, different forms of artificial intelligence to actually come up with a with a product of data that dispensary workers, LPs, and retailers can use to create better prescriptions so that when you go home, you have more confidence that certain products that can help you with your glaucoma or your, or your arthritis or whatever ailment that you're suffering from. Part of the big revenue model comes just from that ability to provide access to people to that data. So are you doing the actual testing or are you aggregating test results from third parties? So we're actually aggregating uh, data from two different sources from the clinical studies. Um, we will be participating using our own cryptocurrency and funding clinical studies. So we're pretty excited about that as it launches. Um, and then the other way is we have two input devices, which we're launching that will soon have a significant amount of cannabis users on it. Um, and we use social listening to bring those anecdotal inputs. You got to remember just because 50 people were in a study and they were talking about what products are, or sorry, how to, you know, they're getting studied to see, you know, for a certain strain to see if it helped them with arthritis. There's tens of thousands of people online having that exact same conversation. Right. And we use cutting edge technologies to bring it in. Nice. You know, one of the problems in yeah. this space, of course, is that the government has had a stranglehold on the feet of cannabis for so long. There's actually very little yeah. empiric data out there. So aggregating reliable anecdotal evidence is a big part of the data. And you have to measure it, right? That's why the studies that are there are so important. So when we look at the way our system looks, is we actually look at the individual. We don't look and say like 25% of people said this in a study. We look at we look at the exact answers so that when we have people online, we compare those. And that's where the machine language and the neural path, uh, uh, neurological pathways come in and actually extrapolating. And this is a very common model in financial, uh, very common methodology in financial modeling for credit scoring. So we're not, we're not reinventing the wheel here. All we're doing is taking a huge amount of, of noisy data, right. hard it out so we can get a better sampling size. Yeah. And if you, we've mentioned uh, that you're involved in some blockchain technology. People hear blockchain. The logical connection next is a cryptocurrency. Are you involved in that space yeah. within the cannabis world? Yeah, for sure. Like our latest, uh, our, our, our second to last press releases, we specifically talked about the launch of our white paper, which talks about it. you got to remember, and as you know, um, Peter, that when you're doing these uh, – you know, you're doing these systems. The reason we did, let's just make it easy. When we did the reason we did blockchain, and this is very transactional data. There's a lot of transactions happening, and if we don't secure it in blockchain, it's going to be really hard to prove. You know, you can't just say at the end it's this. You have to actually be able to show if you're going to get any validation. If you're going to get a a regulator, a doctor, or even a retailer to sign off on that a certain sign, product sign, is sorry, good signing, for certain, it's sorry, not. You mean signing off on the data that you've aggregated, signing off on the data you've collected to give it validity, you're now attaching it to a blockchain in a distributed ledger. Well, signing off on the transactional nature of our of our algorithm, creating a data that says this product this product is good for this strain, ergo our paying to strain trademark. So you gotta remember if you can't show that, then you're like everybody else. It's all hyperbole. And so it's very important that uh, you know we can show that. The nature of the chain of all blockchain is that data is actually the currency. That's the cryptocurrency. You've got to remember the token, 
is is essentially the cup that holds the water. And so we're excited, and and we just published our first white paper about that. Uh, the process is starting. It's really important that everybody understands we're not actually doing an ICO. And that's a critical component of this. This is not about selling a future. This is about a utility. And you have a large institution involved, I understand. So, yeah, so we're actually working with the Central Bank of Lithuania um, and carrying that white paper forward. It's very important in this this because of all the SEC rulings and, and the perception around this. And I've had conversations with Canadian regulators explain the model. And they seem pretty happy about, wow, you're not doing an ICO. You're not trying to, like find a way to get around the securities rules um, to get a, to somebody look at this and actually get the stamp of approval say that this is actually a utility token you got to remember it's critical to our business model our revenue utility means asset asset means it has a value that value as it grows by people pressing buttons is important and you can eventually monetize that asset for sure, like you can any asset, right? And, um, you know, so it's, and I think what it does is it really forces the company to go out and do its job, right? And to go get data, to make things happen inside of it, to actually create that outcome, like this product is better for this, right? right. And that's what we're excited about. So I saw your presentation. There's a $30 million revenue line projected in the business plan. What's that? Well, that's, that's come, that, that's that, uh, and, and you're the first guy to ask me about that. So thank you. I appreciate that. That actually comes from the asset, right? So as people are pressing buttons and the transactional nature of the data is growing, the true definition of crypto and blockchain, that goes up in value. Then what happens is we have this asset. Look, it's similar to having an apartment building that you build and everybody wants to move in and you sell an apartment. And you sell part of it. So we have the ability to go out and go sell some of these coins as they increase in value by people pressing buttons, by moving that data around. And, so the, you know, your, that... that your risk, um, but your risk, ahead. your risk, though, is there aren't enough people to buy those apartments and the apartments fall in value. That's your risk. Yeah. There's always risk in that, but the the nature of the nature of the uh, of the partnerships that we built specifically with Mr. Lee is he, he you know we we brought some of, as you've seen in the deck we brought some of the best people in each segment of our business around Sam Lee and Tony Skugas, better known as Tony G, the poker player, right? These guys are involved with many many different blockchain initiatives, and they have the ability of working with us to ensure that the right optics by the right people. This thing aggregates in value by people pressing buttons and I gotta say that you get coins by pressing buttons those people choose to sell those on the exchange that's up to them and that's where investors can go out to go get those coins okay. two short answers what's your coin going to be called it's called the citizen green token what's its symbol uh, CGT and is it trading on an exchange yet no we just actually released the white paper the token uh, launch uh, uh, will be very shortly coming, like very, sh I'm not talking months, I'm talking very shortly coming. So that's the next major milestone for the company then? Yeah, so the, the next major milestone is definitely obviously uh, the, the, the token launch. We look at that as part of the whole kind of the, the, the overall white paper initiative. But the, the, the next major launch is, or next major initiative is those half million cannabis users. And as you've seen on our milestones, we're well ahead of the curve in accomplishing our milestones. So as CEO, I'm making everybody push things forward. We want to get more done this year than we are planning to do. Great. We'll check in when the coin comes out and is listed. We'll see how the ICO goes, and we'll tell our viewers uh, uh, we're, the latest update. We're, we're not, not doing an ICO. My mistake. You're all right. You said that earlier, and I'm wrong. Uh, when the coins <laughs> it's are, okay. When their coins are traded on an exchange, we'll come back and check in and see how you're doing. How's that? My pleasure. Thanks, Peter. Brad Moore of, uh, of uh, Global Cannabis, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much for having me.